So have you folks noticed that the barrel on the two and a half inch stock lens on your Nova Plus is actually not one full piece. It's two pieces. I'm going to grab my pie burn grip out of the bolt and I'm going to install it and we're going to run it today on the Nova Plus. And I'm going to show you exactly why that was a really intuitive design on that two and a half inch lens. Today on Laser Nug. So many of you lately have been asking me, what's been going on with the Bolt lately? Am I using it? Am I selling it? I'm absolutely not selling it. It's primarily been used to run my tumblers or smaller items like leatherette items, keychains, those kind of things, or small acrylic signs. I've primarily been spending my time for the last two months familiarizing myself with how this Nova Plus works, as well as defining new settings for different types of materials, as you folks have seen. Until about two days ago, when I realized that maybe I should be running some of my tumblers in the Nova Plus, specifically because of this lens barrel design. So I'm gonna grab the pie burn, we're gonna set it up, I'll show you the steps I go through on the Nova Plus, it's super easy, and I'll give you a few tips or a few things I've learned about using that Ruida control panel. Let's hop into light burn. So I've got just a, a wrap design here. I'm gonna be doing a 32 ounce Stanley style tumbler, you know, one with the big handle on the side that you have to remove, and you end up with those mounts sticking up. So I've already done my outline here, as you can see, I use a tool layer to figure out my total circumference and what kind of an area I have to play in. You'll see up here, I've used another tool layer to identify where the branding spots are, as well as where the handle sits. That gives me an idea as to where to place my different graphics. If it's helpful for you folks to know, I've got two settings for my tumblers on the Nova Plus. For these Grosch style tumblers, which are a very premium tumbler, they have a really nice, full, rich powder coat on them. I'm using a thousand millimeters a second at 60% power, no air, fill mode, and I'm running at 800 LPI. And if you're like me, I sometimes like to put a score around parts of my designs. So I have a line setting here at a thousand millimeters a second, but at 35 and 30% power, full air, line mode, one pass. And I use that sometimes in some designs just to give a little bit of emphasis or a little more definition, you might say. And then I'm gonna show you how I set up my pie burn grip, connect it into the Nova Plus, fire it up. We're gonna check our rotary window in light burn, make sure my rotations per minute and all those good things are correct. And then we're gonna engrave one of these Stanley style tumblers. Let's remove the handle off of the cup. Simple hex screw or an Allen key. We're gonna turn on our Nova Plus. I'm only gonna turn on the main switch at this point. I don't want the laser switch on just for safety's sake because I'm gonna be playing with that laser head. Once it's finished initializing, I'm gonna take my Z table and I'm gonna drop my honeycomb down really far because I need to get the rotary in. I'm gonna drop my Piper and grip in here. One of the nice benefits of these pie burn grips is they have magnetic feet. So you'll feel it grip onto your honeycomb. It's pretty sturdy. If you push hard enough, you can move it, but it generally will stay where you put it once you've lined it up. There's not really any need to put any type of push pins or cable ties through your honeycomb to hold it in place. It locks in and it locks in pretty tight. You'll notice I'm using my hexa jaws, six points of contact good firm grip and I've already set this up already. I've already got it tilted to a three degree angle because of the style or the taper on that mug. I find that around three degrees gives you a reasonably even focus across the cup despite the big harsh taper in the middle. Now I'm just going to bring the laser head over and I'm going to line up my center line make sure that I'm perfectly parallel with the x-axis just like you do on any other laser. I'm just going to use my arrow keys I think I'm pretty safe to bring this up a little bit. And as you folks know, this grip two has a center line indicator right across the back axis of the check, as well as a center point on the back support wheels. So you can cleanly line it up. Okay, I can see it nice and clear. I'm just gonna follow that line. and I'm just gonna check it here on the back. So I'm perfectly centered, but here's what I wanna do before I go any further. I'm gonna move my head back over that center line and I'm gonna push the origin button on my controller. 
The reason you want to push that origin button is because you've already done the work to line up your axis parallel with your x-axis. So when you're putting your tumblers in and you're moving that head out of the way, doing a little work here, you want to be able to get back to this reference point. And a little tip you may or may not know, but if you push the escape key on your controller, it tells the laser to home the head back to the origin that you just set. It's a pretty cool feature. I just found it this week. That being said, let's plug in our unit and load up the tumbler. Your Nova Plus already has a pre-wired seven pin connector, so you can just plug in your rotary and jump into light burn. You'll hear that click. That's the machine recognizing that you've just connected a new device. You're doing basically the same thing you do on your bolt. You're just doing it now on the Nova Plus. I'm a big fan of these hexa jaws. You get a nice firm grip every time. Let me show you how you work your rotary commands. In other words, how you spin your cup backwards or forwards. On your control panel, you're going to press menu. And we all know that autofocus is the first choice. Right below it, it says U move. So we're going to use our down arrow. We're going to highlight U move and we're going to press enter. And now what that does is it uses your directional arrows, your left and right X axis arrows to spin the cup. That turns it towards you. The left arrow turns it away from you. When you've positioned your cup where you want it, you want to press escape. And that gets you back to a clean menu, ready to do your autofocus or any other type of activities, such as loading the file. And we're going to turn the cup so we can get those mounts out of the way. Let's autofocus. I pressed my origin button right on the center line here already. So now I'm going to use only my left and right arrows to run down to the cup. On these Stanley type cups, I usually use right around this area as a focus point because I've already tilted this cup three degrees up at the back to try to average out this big taper here. Let's do an autofocus. I'm going to press the menu key again. It's already highlighted autofocus. I'm going to press enter. And here's where this two piece barrel comes in really handy. So if I spin this cup so you can see the mounts, I'm just going to jump into my menu, drop down to U move, press enter, and let's spin the cup. You'll notice I have a very significant clearance issue. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to press origin right here on that cup, and we're going to move the laser head out of the way. I'm going to shut off the laser power. Sorry about the beeping, but just for safety. And I'm going to remove my two and a half inch lens. And now I'm going to take the bottom section of the lens off. And what that does when I put this back in is it's now given me about another three quarters of an inches of clearance while still maintaining proper focus. Because remember the lens is in here. I've already done my autofocus. So the position of the lens relative to the cup doesn't change. We've just shortened the barrel. And we're good. I can put this back up in here, tighten it firm, make sure it doesn't move. We're good. And now I'm going to go back, press the escape button, and it's going to bring that laser head right back to that exact center line I left it when I pressed origin the last time. And now you can see I've got a whole lot of clearance and I clear the mounts very easily. Back in light burn. I'm not going to come down. I'm going to right click devices because you'll see I was using light burn before I turned the laser on. So it hasn't been looking for it. I'm going to right click devices and that's going to force light burn to go back out and see if it can see the laser or not. And as you can see, it did. We're ready. I have it on the Nova plus. I have my design already pre done. I've got my origin at the top. I'm going to come up here to my rotary. You'll see the green dot on there. It's telling me that it sees the rotary and it's connected. I have it on Chuck. That's what my Grip 2 does. I've got enabled rotary for the Pyburn Grip 2 on a Thunder Laser unit. The steps per rotation is 30,000. I've already calculated my diameter and I've input it already and it's here, 3.895. And it's giving me the circumference and it says the settings have been read successfully. So I know I'm in good shape. I'm hooked up. I'm gonna close that window. I'm ready. I have my engrave and my line settings in and all is good to go. Let's send it off to the laser. 
So I'm going to come to my menu here again. I'm going to press menu, push my down arrow to highlight you move. I'm going to press enter and that's going to allow me to use my arrows to spin the cup to exactly where I need it to go. And it's right about there. I'm going to escape out of that you move menu and now I'm going to run and finish this. Should be right there. I'm going to come to the controller. I'm going to press file. I'm going to bring up that file and everything looks good. So we're going to frame it. Now we're ready to go. And before I start, I just want to do a quick test on my low air for my engrave setting, as well as the high air for that score line I'm going to put through that tumbler. Yeah, about 0.4 fluctuates or flickers to 0.6. I think that's pretty good for the engrave. And we'll just test to make sure we're getting good air or full air. Yeah, somewhere around 1.617. That's my full air on this unit. Let's start our job. So while we're engraving, I thought I'd cover a few items. Within about a few months of buying my Bolt, about 20 months ago, I ended up eventually buying all the optional lenses. And the reason why is because I, you start to learn that each lens kind of has a, a skill or what it does best, so to speak. So for example, for your detail stuff, you want that one and a half inch lens. If you're starting to want to cut deeper or thicker materials, you've got to move your way up to the four inch lens, depending on how thick because each lens is designed to do, you know, although it'll do general engraving, it's designed for a specific purpose. So when I bought the Nova Plus, I just decided I would get the three optional lenses as, in addition to the two and a half inch lens that came stock. So I picked up the one and a half, the two, and I also have the four. Interesting observation is that your one and a half and your two and a half inch lenses do not have a removable barrel. It's one piece, both of them. And I think that kind of makes sense because your one and a half and your two are more oriented to very fine detailed engraving as well as cutting. Your two and a half has, as you know, about a three quarter inch removable barrel. And your four inch, and I'll just show you that if you haven't seen it yet, you'll notice there's almost two inches, probably one and a half, one and three quarter inches of the barrel can be removed. And what I've learned is the purpose of that is exactly what we're doing here. If you're doing engraving on things that are concave, you know, like a salad bowl or a spoon or any type of material or item that you have that has kind of a deep well in it or an uneven surface, you want to be able to focus, but you also need to get that lens out of the way so that you're not going to have a collision with the laser head maybe for example on the side of the bowl or maybe you're making coasters or coin trays or any other type of design. So the ability to focus in, get proper focus and then remove part of the barrel to allow you extra clearance is a pretty insightful and pretty ingenious idea I think. And I think the reason why it only exists on the two and a half and the four is because those are have your longer focal lengths so to speak, I think I'm saying that correctly. So it gives you that opportunity to go deeper or further, but also be focused up and get that barrel out of the way so you get more clearance on these items, such as these Stanley-like tumblers. I mean, no need to bend those mounts anymore or snap them, which, you know, seven out of 10 times I end up snapping them, which is why I don't bend them anymore. And they're a very expensive mug. As it pertains to light burn, I'm sure many of you noticed, I did not use taper warp. I never used taper warp on a mug or drinkware that looks like these Stanleys. I'll use them on kind of your standard drinkware, something that has a graduated or a reasonably consistent taper to it. Because in all fairness, this is a machine driven algorithm or calculation. So when you put your top diameter and your bottom and your length in, it's going to try to assess kind of an average or linear taper to whatever the item is that you plan on engraving. Well, these Stanleys don't have that. These type of cups do, so it works reasonably well in this case. But in the case of the Stanley, you've got 
a reasonably prominent taper down to here, and then you have a very, very aggressive taper, which drops that diameter substantially, by the way, if you've measured it. And then you have a continuing taper from here to here. So when you're measuring your top, bottom, and your length of your wrap or your design, that calculation is assuming some kind of a linear progression from this diameter to this one. It cannot account for this severe drop here. And what happens every time I've tried it is you're going to distort your engrave significantly. So much so that it's obvious. It's not a gentle or a subtle distortion it'll be completely distorted, especially as it comes down through the cup. So that's why I don't use taper warp on these. However, if I have parts of my design that are circular in nature, or maybe it's a circular logo, on the cup, I'll take that part of the design only, and I will add some width to that circle so that it provides the opportunity for it to vis visibly look like a circle. So in this design, I ungroup the design, I grab that volleyball, and I added 5% to that width the width only. So I unlock my aspect ratio, I go to my percentages, I type in 105% beside the width only, and then I lock my aspect ratio again. Then I regroup the whole design. That way the ball will come out looking circular instead of oblong or shrunken. Okay, we'll grab some Dawn Power Wash. Let's see how well those settings worked on this gray colored tumbler. I think those settings worked really well. Take a look. I think what I will do though is on that line setting for the score lines, I'm just gonna drop that power in case anybody's gonna be trying those settings. That power level was at 35 and 30 and I'm going to drop it down to 30 and 25 because there were a couple of tiny spots where it, it either looked like it scorched a bit or it was just a accumulation of debris. It cleaned off really easy. I just didn't like the discoloration at the first. But yeah, I think she turned out all right. So another week, another couple of things learned on the old Nova Plus. I'm very, very happy with this unit so far. I just I have a lot more to learn than I've already learned and it just seems that the more I use it the more things or intuitive pieces or features on this unit start to come to light. So I'm super happy. I'm definitely doing my Stanley like tumblers or those tumblers that have a big handle. I'm going to be doing them in here from now on and I'll leave my regular tumblers for the bolt. Thanks for sticking around. As always I hope there were a few things in there that were new or things that you've learned and I really appreciate you hanging out with me on the channel. Have a great week. And don't forget to have fun with your lasers. Please be kind, and I'll see you again right here. I'm Gord Potter, and you've been watching Laser Nug. Cheers.